Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, I'm the Investigamer. TJ's been receiving a lot of requests to talk about the whole Gamergate fiasco with Zoe Quinn and Anita Sarkeesian. So he's enlisted my help to shed light on the subject because it's something that hits really close to home for me. I'm somewhat of a freelance gaming critic here on YouTube, and I've been obsessed with video games for pretty much my entire life. In this video, I'm gonna break down what's happened with Gamergate so far, starting with the question, what is Gamergate? About a month ago, Aaron Joni, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, started a WordPress blog called The Zoe Post. It outlines the sexual and personal exploits of an indie game developer known as Zoe Quinn. A feminist, social justice warrior who is known for using lies, harassment, and manipulation for her own personal gain within the gaming industry, and has admitted to throwing her own feminist beliefs under the bus during these exploits. Following this post, gamers have uncovered rampant incestuous behavior between gaming journalists, indie game developers, and social justice warriors. Gamergate is a movement led by gamers and for gamers intending to combat this corruption within the gaming industry. Before I go any further, I would like to thank and credit Mundane Matt, Internet Aristocrat, and Kane JW for their contributions to this movement. They have been influential in bringing these ideas to the forefront of the gaming industry, and I will be directly referencing investigations and sources from these people. And I will make sure to leave citations in the description section below for all the stuff I use in this video. Regardless of what you may have heard, the Gamergate movement is primarily concerned with the ethical corruption of gaming journalism. We will be taking a look at a number of events that supposedly violate the ethics of journalism. And before we do that, we have to understand what defines ethical journalism, at least on a broad level. Taken straight from Wikipedia. While various existing codes have some differences, most share common elements including the principles of truthfulness, accuracy, objectivity, impartiality, fairness, and public accountability. Out of these principles, I want you to keep in mind three in particular, objectivity, impartiality, and public accountability. These are the primary principles being questioned with regards to gaming journalism, and here's why. Firstly, we have the girl who started it all, Zoe Quinn. It has been confirmed that Quinn had an ongoing sexual relationship with Nathan Grayson, a writer at Kotaku and Rock Paper Shotgun. Grayson has written articles about Zoe Quinn twice. The first article is a list of 50 games added to Steam through the Steam Greenlight service. Out of that list of 50, Nathan used Quinn's game for the article image and named it as the first standout title. The second article is about an indie game reality TV show called Game Jam and how the show was canceled allegedly because the CEO tried to stir up drama. Regardless of who's right or wrong on that debacle, the article references Zoe Quinn directly by name multiple times and seems to be tailored towards her side of the argument. It's uh, also interesting to note that following the collapse of this Game Jam event, Zoe began heading a project called Rebel Jam, which she is accepting donations to her private PayPal. Huh. Weird. So in summary, Zoe Quinn had a sexual relationship with Nathan Grayson who wrote two, count them two, favorable articles about her which she probably benefited from. That is unethical, unequivocally so. It violates impartiality because you're getting physically and emotionally involved with the people you're writing about. <sighs> Next we have another Kotaku writer by the name of Patricia Hernandez. She's written at least two articles benefiting people she knows personally or even had a previous private relationship with. The first article about a game developed by Christine Love and the second developed by Anna Anthropy. Wow, two more instances of completely ignoring impartiality. Does Kotaku have any standards? <laughs> Apparently not, because they also allow their journalists to contribute money to the people they've covered. Yeah, that's completely impartial. I mean, look at Kirk Hamilton, another Kotaku dude, donating money to good old Zoe Quinn. But it's not just Kotaku, Ben Kuchera with Polygon is in there too. <sighs> All right, 
So gamers started seeing a recurring problem and decided to raise legitimate questions about games journalism. Some were concerned, some were admittedly angry, but I don't think anyone quite expected what happened next. Gaming journalists responded in droves by insulting us? What? Yeah, almost every major news site was putting out articles like A Guide to Ending Gamers, The End of Gamers, Gamers Don't Have to Be Your Audience, The Death of an Identity. <sighs> Ignoring the very obviously opinionated headlines, we begin to notice a prominent trend. Doesn't this onslaught of articles seem like I don't know, a coordinated effort? I mean, if that were true, that would blatantly defy objectivity and accountability. They're spinning a story in a direction favorable to them, and not one of them is even attempting to hold journalists accountable for past actions. Well, hold on to your butts, because guess what? It likely was a coordinated effort. Yeah, just the other day it was revealed that journalists and editors from a plethora of different tech and gaming sites communicate privately in a Google group called Game Journo Pros. And I'm sure some of you might be thinking, hey, maybe they're just getting together to swap stories or talk about the latest game. Maybe they're just networking. That's perfectly acceptable within most jobs, right? I mean, maybe they're not doing anything unethical in terms of journalism. Well, with this information comes a leaked email thread talking specifically about the Zoe Quinn debacle, discussing how best to help her. I've been able to confirm writers from Wired, Eurogamer, GameSpot, Joystick, Gotaku, TechRadar, Ars Technica, Game Informer, and Polygon as members of the mailing list. This is a big deal. Over 14 different news sites posted articles favorable towards Zoe Quinn's pro-feminist, professional victimhood ideology effectively diverting attention from the real issue of corrupt journalism. I'm afraid that it's become abundantly clear that these people have no interest in reporting accurately about both sides of the issue. They would much rather spin a narrative beneficial to them. These writers don't care about objectivity, about impartiality, or accountability for their actions or the actions of other journalists. So why are these journalists using sexism and misogyny as talking points to divert the issue? Why? Because Zoe Quinn is a woman, of course, and we all know that when a woman receives negative criticism or negative comments, that she's being oppressed, she's being harassed because she's a woman? Many articles are claiming that Anita Sarkeesian was run out of her own home as a result of a threat, likely and specifically in most articles, made by a gamer. They're saying that Anita and now Quinn are being attacked based solely on their gender, not because of their dishonest and corrupt behavior. Okay, first of all, just because there's this small and hateful group of people that are causing trouble, that doesn't mean the entire massive demographic of gamers are to blame. There are small, vocal, and explosive subsets of people in every major demographic. It doesn't reflect that all gamers are inherently sexist or misogynist. Secondly, why is no one reporting the other side to this whole games are misogynist and sexist angle? Why aren't we seeing articles that talk about those who've soundly refuted Anita Sarkeesian's claim in very well thought out videos and articles? Plenty have done it, Thunderfoot, Mr. Repsion, and even TJ. Well, there is one more video released not too long ago levying legitimate criticism towards Anita Sarkeesian's claims. An educated, experienced, and well-established longtime feminist, Christina Summers. Now gamers are dealing with a new army of critics, gender activists, and I don't know, hipsters with degrees in cultural studies. 
And these critics are concerned that gaming is largely a heteropatriarchal capitalist pursuit. Now, these critics have made some useful points about sexist tropes and narratives, but they do a lot of cherry picking and they ignore the fact that the world of gaming has become inclusive. There are games that fit a vast array of preferences and games with responsibly proportioned and appropriately garbed female protagonists. Yet the video game gender police have become so harsh and intolerant, relentless. Many of them want more than women on both sides of the video screen. They want the male video game culture to die. <laughs> In this video, Summers raises some pretty excellent points. She explains that there is no evidence indicating that games cause people to become more sexist, more homophobic, more racist, or otherwise. And surprisingly, games journalists actually decided to respond this time by once again dismissing the opposition. Several articles seemingly coordinated yet again to send virtually the same message all attempted to deflect Summers' criticism. They claim that Summers is just the pawn of a conservative think tank. <laughs> so uh, I did some digging and I found out that these accusations are, um, wait for it, wait for it, wait for it, completely baseless. Christina Summers earned her bachelor's at New York University and a PhD in psychology at Brand Day. She's a former philosophy professor in ethics at Clark University and is now a respected scholar for the completely non-partisan American Enterprise Institute. She's made popular media contributions to Time, Huffington Post, Atlantic, and Slate. In the academic world, she is far more of an authority than Anita Sarkeesian. What's even more fucking interesting is that some articles are completely dismissing her research because she actually talked to gamers. Yeah, I mean, imagine that. She actually went out and tried to understand and learn from the demographic of people that feminists are so harshly criticizing, slandering, and defaming. How can you learn anything from actually talking to and respecting people and asking them about the issues? That's just crazy, right? Uh, no, it's uh, actually not crazy. Um, that's actually a common practice. It's called ethnography, or the study and research of people and cultures through data collection. One of the main forms of data collection being interviews. Of course, to do this, you have to approach the culture or people with respect as an outsider a concept that Anita Sarkeesian has done nothing but shit all over. <sighs> are you beginning to understand why we are so pissed off? Are you beginning to see how disgusted we must be? How revolted we are that the people who we have entrusted for years to review, critique, and analyze the hobby that we so passionately love get in bed with the very people who despise us, who hate us, who hate our culture, who want to completely and radically change our culture and turn the game development process on its head, who want nothing but to slander us, and inject politically correct, disingenuous, and completely unfounded messages into the games that we love. Ladies and gentlemen, this is important. Video games are a global force, an art form, and a beloved hobby. We should want people who report on this art form to exercise the same level of ethical standards as all other news sources. We should want consumers to be protected from this kind of behavior, from reviews that praise a game just because the developer and the reviewer are in bed with each other. We should want the gaming media that we have entrusted with our hobby to stop debasing, defaming, and outright mocking us and the games we play. We have to fight back. I'm the Investigamer. For more coverage on Gamergate, please subscribe to my channel. Together, maybe we can make a difference. Until next time, never trust the crowd, only the investigation.